Funding for Working Lunch is provided by the financial contributions of viewers like you. Additional funding is provided by First Bank, McGuire Woods Consulting, and Fidelity Investments. This week on Working Lunch, a great conversation with leaders in the building, construction, and real estate world. So pull up a chair and join us for this Working Lunch. Working Lunch is a production of UNC-TV in association with the North Carolina Free Enterprise Foundation. So Blair, tell us about your company. My name is Blair Bordeaux. I'm president of Bordeaux Construction. We uh, predominantly do commercial municipal work across the eastern two-thirds of North Carolina. Uh, we do a lot of correctional, educational, and uh, higher ed work. Uh, do a lot of work with uh, state construction in North Carolina. Kim? Uh, I'm Kim Dawson. I'm with uh, a broker realtor with Caldwell Banker Advantage here in the um, Triangle area where we have 700 realtors, but most importantly, I'm president of the North Carolina Realtors, representing 37,000 realtors and 50 associations across the state of North Carolina. And Valerie? I'm Valerie Akinis. I'm with Calix Engineers and Consultants. We were formerly Mulkey Engineers and Consultants. Um, we're a southeast regional firm headquartered here in Cary, doing civil, structural, environmental, survey, sue, transportation engineering. We do projects, state construction similar to you, a lot of health care, private, and, and a lot of roadway transportation projects. Blake? And I'm Blake Massengill. I'm the owner of Massengill Design Build, and we are located in Fuqua Arena and build houses all around Wake County, mainly brick ranch style homes. So the building and construction trade, always uh, cyclical to the economy. Well, what are some of the ongoing challenges you face running your company? So right now we're in a, a you know, an uptick in, in construction. So certainly, you know, competent and workers uh, and, and subcontractors are, have been a big stress for us lately. Um, so we're, we're really working hard to try to find those subcontractors because it's, it's pretty thin right now. Workforce issues for you? Yes, workforce issues are the same with us in the um, professional field as well as, I mean, let's say all ends of our business are surveyors. We have a hard time finding surveyors, um, engineers. Besides the fact that I think there are less engineers going into the industry these days as there were previously, um, there's a lot of companies fighting for them because there is a, um, a surge in the economy right now, so people are hiring. So it's very competitive. You finding those challenges too? That's definitely the case in residential home building, exactly what he was speaking of. Uh, shortage of framers, painters, skilled laborers, there's just not as many people going into those trades today and, and labor shortages is causing the price of housing to rise every day and ver various building companies bidding against each other for the same labor. And that's interesting because in our business we've got a lot of people coming into the real estate business. We've probably grown our association about 2,000 members in the last Two thousand or last two years, um, but we struggle getting appraisers and surveyors to do. So there doesn't seem to be enough out there that they're all busy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's interesting that you're seeing that the shortage in them, and we have a hard time getting them to service our, our transactions because they all seem to be busy. Yeah. Long lead times. Yes, that's yeah. increased a lot. We mm -hmm. used to be able to do inspections and surveys within maybe a two-week, three-week period, and now they're booked enough. We've got to we've got to go four weeks mm -hmm. to be able to get somebody on the on the calendar. So which, yeah, interesting. Which is interesting, because it impacts the same thing on my end of the business: building the home, having the home completed, for you to have your buyers to move in. The time, additional time it takes for the appraisal, for the bank to finalize the loan, that has to be added to the end of the process. And so then that shortens my time to build the home to be able to allow time for that additional time to get that done. Interesting. Yeah, we'd love to be doing your surveying. However, it's hard to find the surveyors to increase the number of crews that we have to go out and survey. So we are having to tell clients it's, we're not going to be able to start until, you know, three or four weeks out. So we understand what you're, where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, it's been interesting. Well, in, in your business, you rely, and all of you rely on a healthy economy in the state of North Carolina, but investments in infrastructure. What, what, what are you finding is the climate of the economy in North Carolina right now? Yeah, so the, the Connect NC bond that just passed, uh, we've seen uh, a lot of that starting to roll uh, out of design, which was, was a really good thing for the economy. Uh, however, I, I would probably make the case it wasn't nearly enough. Um, with the amount of state work that we do, uh, you go into a lot of the state buildings and just see a lot of dilapidated 
uh, project. So most of the work that was in the Connected NC bond was was really just for new construction. Um, so I, you know, I see that that was a good thing for the state uh, to kind of get some of that unneeded or that needed uh, pent up construction that that kind of got put on hold during the recession. But I still think there's a lot of work to be done, uh, particularly in, in renovation and repair work um, for state buildings across and, the state. And exactly on that, as many people that are moving into the triangle every day, roads are, are major issues, uh, traffic, people buying houses constantly do not want to be sitting in the car, so they're looking to be closer to the location uh, instead, instead of commuting as far, and at the same time then, you have to have water and sewer infrastructure, and roads, uh, that's the number one thing that I, that I hear. We did have some some funding increases this past session, but um, by no means what we need in the region. Um, I agree with you totally. The roadway infrastructure as well, the water infrastructure um, is very important and critical. And <clears throat> quite frankly, it's aging. The, particularly, the water infrastructure is aging, and we have not been putting, similar to we haven't been putting into our buildings, the maintenance funds that we really need to keep our, our infrastructure healthy. So some um, additional funds and infrastructure could go a long way. You know, realtors tend to be on the tip of the spear in terms of the economy. What are you hearing from the members that mm -hmm. you're meeting with as the president of the association? Um, well, our, our business has been good. We're, we're seeing growth in home prices. Our biggest struggle right now is our inventory is low. And for a long time, it was hard for the builders to catch up after the recession. But um, I know over the summer months, the builders have caught up and, and we've had more um, sales in new construction. Our biggest struggle is resale. Um, our inventory is old, um, older homes in the resale, and buyers don't want old, they want new. They want new, and, yep. and, with, new, and with new construction, as much as I'm trying to get inventory on the ground, and other builders are trying to get inventory on the ground, the positive thing is that people are buying houses before they are finished, but okay. then that, that slows down the inventory of somebody that needs to, a quick move home and wants to move into their house and cannot wait for it to be built. Yeah, you can't, you can't get them up out of the ground. I mean, uh, the builders can't get spec homes done. They're selling them before the specs that's even right. done. Conver yeah. Converting during construction. Yeah. yeah, but that's been great. That was our biggest struggle coming out of the recession is um, buyers wanted new construction and the builders hadn't caught up because of the recession. And now it's nice to see the builders are catching up and. The, but the other side of it is that the buyers want new construction and our resale is down considerably. And, and land, land development and entitlement for new lots on the ground will take you anywhere from 18 to 24 months to put, to put those on the ground where they're ready to build a house on and then add another four to six months to build a house. It takes two and a half years to really get that inventory on the ground and that's, that's one of our concerns is just having enough lots, having available opportunities to build the houses on. You know, this sure sounds like we're out of the recession. <laughs> Do you guys feel like we're out of the recession? Yeah, I would definitely say it's, um, you know, it, we turned a corner probably two, three years ago, and um, it, it really, you know, pointing positive with the bond program that's rolling out um, with the, the incoming people that are moving here. Um, it's, it's still positive for the next three to five years, if I was guessing, um, plus the, the designer backlog. They, they really kind of... You guys kind of lead, we lead, it. lead mm -hmm. us, and mm -hmm. so just with all of the, the relationships and contacts we hear on, on that side of the equation, is, is it, it's kind of there's a lot of pent up um, demand for, for growth that's going to last several years, it looks like at least. I think we were slow coming out of it. Um, certain sectors were busier than others with, with that bond. We didn't have much higher education until that bond came out, and so you're seeing it in design, and you're going to see the construction of it probably in a year or two. But um, <clears throat> roadway infrastructure as well, that wasn't coming out and it's beginning to come out. So we're beginning to see some of that stuff come out. So I think it was a really slow emergence from, from the recession. However, I do think um, I'm on the NAOP board in the Triangle and I do think from what I hear there are some banks pulling back on funding of private sector jobs more like your, like we've had such a boom of apartment multifamily building and that's going to that's gonna slow down as well as some, some of your commercial high-rise office buildings, those opportunities, because they're not going to be um, they're not going to be able to get funding unless they're, you know, um, a certain percentage booked and, and rented lease. So, I think you're going to see certain sectors continue and other sectors slow down in the next two years. Um, and then you there's the other challenge of um, the construction prices are going up. I mean monthly so as you as an owner you know they're 
budgeting for a facility and they're trying to project escalation, but by the time, you know, and the, and the designers are trying at these marts to try and track it, but it goes up so quickly, um, that's one of the, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. I mean, it, it goes both ways, but owners are going to get a lot. So the, so the longer it takes to put a building up, the more costly it's going to be, or longer it takes to, to get it designed um, and permitted, I'll say regulations have something to do with that. So if you add months to your permitting schedule and your regulation schedule, your, your cost is going to go up. Is regulation a challenge for you? Regulation can be a, be a challenge. The biggest thing, as I mentioned earlier, is entitlement of land, getting land ready for development, going through the process of uh, streamlined buffers, staying out of wetlands, trying to preserve open space, which is very, very important to keep when you have density of houses, but um, making it burdensome for if the state has one rule on how far you must stay from wetlands or for any other any creeks, and then sometimes local municipalities want to add additional rules to those that exceed the state, and that has um, not necessarily a scientific base behind it, and that makes it very tough, difficult to know which area you're building in versus state rules, and then you go to different municipalities or different areas, and they treat it differently or interpret the rules simply differently. Are you finding those challenges too on the commercial side? Yeah, I mean, it, it does vary a lot from municipality to municipality. Um, we don't, I mean, I guess we're kind of geared more for uh, the, the commercial side, so we understand, you know, the regulations that we're working in. So I mean, we're we're kind of geared for dealing with a lot of bureaucracy, but um, it does vary a lot, though, depending on you know which municipality you're working in, and part of that just knowing where you're working. The realtors work under a, a regulated system. How, how do you find those challenges? Um, well. For us, it's been good. You know, in real estate, we we are licensed, regulated. Um, there's actually 83,000 realtor or um, licensees, but 37 are realtors, and we have the code of ethics. and And because of the state association, we can lobby for home ownership and for our realtors. So um, we're not just about lobbying and protecting the realtors. We're about home ownership and uh, things that happen in the communities, things that happen in the state, working with the legislators. So it is about trying to um, help home ownership and work with the builders. Um, we've got a great relationship with the Home Builders Association. And, um, and I think one of the biggest issues that we are dealing with is the roads and transportation because everything within town is developed already and we're having to go further out, which means people are having longer commutes. And over the years, people have moved here because of the ease of the commute and, and the lifestyle. But as we go further out, we've got to make it easier for them to get to the RTP and downtown Raleigh. You know, Regulatory-wise, the, the civil side, you know, the environmental and, and you know, the uh, wetland and, and intermittent stream, those type discussions are probably the, the single most volatile regulatory requirement we face, uh, much more so than, than you know, Building code or, yeah. or safety, the, the uh, it's more civil environment. The site. Yeah. It's yeah. more surrounded by the site, yeah. and, and homeowners are very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. That's um, you know, it's even once they're in their homes, the new construction that goes up around them, they're very engaged in in the issues, and we've seen that a lot of the in a lot of the communities where they're trying to do infrastructure, infrastructure, and and doing more development in the communities, and we're having to go more up instead of out and um, homeowners are getting very engaged. Um, the good and bad, but um, they're very vocal about what's happening, and I know it impacts how you do your business. That's right, density. Density is really the only way that you can control, control some of the, uh, the land costs right there, but if you're looking for locations that are, are trying to be out of town or further away, but you still have to go, you still have to have more dense lots to fit, the, fit those there, and not everybody wants to be on a dense lot, but they do want to be convenient to a downtown. Right. Well, so much of what we've talked about now, the economic well-being of the state's been driven by a pretty dramatic growth in the state's population. Is that sustainable? Is there something we need to do if this growth is going to continue? Um, whether it's sustainable or not, it appears it's going to continue. So, quite frankly, I think we have to wrap our arms around it and figure out how to handle it the best we can, including infrastructure, public transportation, um, regulation, all of those areas. Um, our universities, you would think, need to grow along with that. Our school systems, our healthcare systems, and and you're seeing some of those 
you are seeing some of those react to this expansion. Unfortunately, what happens is, is they, with anything, the growth starts to happen and the expansion lags, you know, because unfortunately it's not build it and they will come, it's they come, now let's build it just to, you know, fit the supply, meet the supply. Um, while we have great schemes of, we don't want to be the next Atlanta or the next, what a congested city, um, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to, you know, put money towards those issues before we become over congested? Yeah, what, what are the challenges you think we face as we continue to grow? Yeah, so I, I, it's exactly like uh, Valerie said, is, is it, um, it's important to not be reactive uh, to, to the growth and, and really be proactive. And I think that's something probably the state struggled a little bit with um, instead of really taking advantage, uh, advantage, we talked about construction prices going up. Instead of taking advantage of the construction prices being in the bottom, uh, now the, the bond is paying a premium on those construction prices. So, you know, the, the owners that had that ability to have some foresight about where they're going to be at and what their needs were going to be and take advantage of lower construction prices. So, you know, I think that's kind of would be hopefully what I would like to see the state do is, is they ought to be looking, you know, five, seven, nine years down the road or maybe even further than that with a, a master plan. And then when that next opportunity comes to take advantage of, you know, big subcontractor availability, workforce availability, lower construction prices, then, then that's really where you can get a lot more bang for your buck in, in my mind. And the growth's not going to slow down. I mean, North Carolina is, is, is situated perfectly for our climate, uh, climate with weather, our business economy, and people are continue, continuing to move here, and it's such a wonderful state, so we definitely have to plan for that. It's not going to slow down. And I know that's good for your industry to hear that a lot of more people are coming here because they want to buy a house when they live here. But what are the challenges you feel we face as a fast-growing state? What would you like to see our legislature and our elected officials do to make sure we're providing what's needed for North Carolina to continue to be attractive? Well, I think the uh, NC Connect bill was a big part. Um, transportation, parks, schools, we need to improve those because um, we've got to keep our schools strong. But I, I think the one thing is transportation. We've talked about the roads. Um, I know there's been um, a light rail talked between Durham and Chapel Hill and Raleigh's got something good going on. We need to find a way to connect the triangle. Um, and, and it's been talked about for years, but we need to get we need to get something on the books and get that going forward because the traffic is happening. I mean, it used, used to be able to get downtown Raleigh from Chapel Hill easy and and now it's bumper to bumper and that was my joy to used to be able to say oh we don't have traffic here in the triangle and it's not quite the case anymore but um, we also need to make housing affordable um, to bring businesses here um, the North Carolina Realtor Association has recently partnered with the um, North Carolina Economic Development Partnership to bring businesses here and help our economy. And it's this whole growth. We need businesses to come that will bring homeowners here. Um, but we have to do it in the right way and we have to make it enticing for people to live here. And part of it is the home ownership, um, uh, like the mortgage interest deductions and um, you know, making it affordable for people to, to buy here and, and not letting um, home ownership not be possible. So that's a big part we work with the legislators is to, to help home ownership grow. Well, as the state continues to urbanize, are there specific transportational infrastructure challenges that we will face that we didn't face historically when we were not so significantly urbanized? Um, the public transportation is a big one. I remember I moved down here about 19 years ago from the Northeast and I was told there is no public transportation, you know. so. Um, we are behind the game in the public transportation arena, and we're struggling to find the right to find the right way to go at it and try to be not traditional and look at it with a fresh perspective, which I applaud. I applaud the different um, areas for doing, not tr not simply saying this is the way it was done a hundred years ago. It's the right way, and they're looking at new ways because we've got new generations that that want it to be done differently, and they travel differently than we all do. So. Um, that, that's something that we need to catch up on, but we also need to um, invest in it. We have to stand up as a community and be willing to invest in it for the future. And even if it's something, it's going to take a long time to get 
something in, and uh, hey, we're, we'll be old when it when it gets rolled out. You At know, however, point, our yes. children and our grandchildren will be the ones reaping the rewards of this investment. So we need to stand up and do that. I think yeah. we got to recognize with, with roads on our infrastructure that mm -hmm. the majority of people here in the Triangle are they drive their car and they commute, and they and a lot of people do not want to give up their car, and. We've got to continue to focus on the roads as being part of uh, transportation and people be able to get, to get to work and where they want to live, eat, work, play, and have fun at. Well, you know, this is one industry that's critical if the state continues to grow. Having you right. successful in your businesses is very important to a fast-growing state like North Carolina. What are the things that you hope elected officials understand about what you do that you think maybe they don't understand? Yeah, the biggest thing is is really just projecting long term for for growth. You know, the the NC Connect bond was was fantastic, but it really was not far enough. Uh, the state has been very conservative, which is a good thing uh, over the years. But there's still a lot of uh, debt capacity that the state could take on, and I, I really think they need to look at state buildings. I mean, there's just hundreds and thousands of square foot of state buildings that are just dilapidated and uh, infrastructure is another big one obviously we don't do a lot of uh, horizontal work but the, the transportation wastewater and water uh, development as we kind of continue to grow those those needs really need to be focused on a state level uh, in, in my mind. Valerie what would you want legislators to know better about running your company? To run our company we're like any business um, taxes are a big deal so the lower our taxes as a business industry the easier it is for us to do business but also um, our business thrives on economic development so everything from the regulations affects economic development to um, banking regulation I mean it's not just regulations on the land it could be banking regulations um, if you can't get a loan buildings aren't going to go up and it's going to affect our climate but um, like any business um, regulators need to know that we need to make this a state where we still attract young people we attract businesses so that we can build for those businesses and that um, our communities can thrive around them give us a good industry for our business a good uh, economic uh, tax climate and our business climate I mean I think those are like the key ones Blake, from your perspective. Well, speaking of regulations, every regulation has a cost impact. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about affordable housing. If somebody is most time, very common, somebody has a house to sell or to buy their next home, and then somebody else is buying their previous home, or they're coming from another state into here, and everything that makes that house or home for somebody more expensive, it prices them out of, out of the market and out of this area. And every regulation, as important as, as many of them are, has a cost impact, and it just simply makes not, it makes it more expensive to live here. Kim, you had uh, opportunity to sit down with a legislator. What would you tell them? Well, I think the same thing that Valerie mentioned. Um, it is the economic development that helps, um, uh, that we need to look at, at bringing to here, as well as the banking issues. Um, but our biggest part is um, making it affordable for people to buy. Um, the mortgage interest deductions, taxes, um, anything that helps encourage home ownerships and provides the benefits. Um, that all helps our, our market. Statistics show that people who own their homes make a better community. They're, they support, they do a greater job of charitable giving. There's less crime. They're more engaged in their communities. So home, we need to encourage home ownership, which helps our, our neighborhoods and communities to be stronger. Are we doing enough to supply the types of workers that you need in your industry? No, not, not at all. Uh, We've seen the Vernon Malone Center at Wake County Schools did recently. I know uh, New Hanover County and Brunswick County have looked at continuing education programs. I think part of, at least in our industry, is, is coming to terms with it. a four-year degree may not be right for everybody. So uh, instead, focusing on developing the, the auto workers, you know, the mechanics, the plumbers, the masons, the carpenters, uh, professionally from starting really like in, in high school and then having a two-year technical degree then they're leaving with a, a you know working skill that, that they can go on the open market and do uh, we just really have not seen a lot of replacement of the uh, predominantly Hispanic workforce with uh, new you know two-year type technical degrees and I think that there's a lot of focus that, that needs to be done to kind of make sure that we're developing those 
mm -hmm. specialized trades as we go forward. Similar challenges on the residential side? Exactly. Trade shortage is, is, is our biggest problem always. And what a lot of people don't realize is some of these, these trades that you mentioned, uh, painters, mechanics, plumbers, framers, any of those, you can make a great living doing that. And you, and you do not have to have a four-year degree to do that. Uh, a lot of times they make more money than somebody out of school with a four-year degree would make, and they do not have all the college debt behind them too. So that's a, that's a very good career that really more people need to look at. Vernon Malone's school does a great job of, of teaching the trades, and we really need more trades and more trade schools and more paths for people to be able to go that direction. Are you finding the young engineers you need? No, no, and I don't know what we can do to help that. Uh, that, I think, ha needs to start in the middle schools where we start um, trying to interest young kids. And maybe, maybe it's certain fields of engineering aren't as exciting or, as, like I say, not as sexy as, as your high-tech job. So we see a lot of these bright kind of math-oriented problem solvers tending to go more towards, I want to call them the more sexy jobs, as opposed to some of the uh, more, uh, well, I don't think what I do is boring, but some people <laughs> might think what I do is boring, right? Um, so I think that needs to start early in middle school where you start attracting young kids into the STEM programs and the <laughs> universities. This has been a great conversation today. Thank all of you for joining me at Work and Lunch. Thanks. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Funding for Working Lunch is provided by the financial contributions of viewers like you. Additional funding is provided by First Bank, McGuire Woods Consulting, and Fidelity Investments. Working Lunch is a production of UNC-TV in association with the North Carolina Free Enterprise Foundation.